This demonstration will show live examples of how the solar winds attack was perpetrated over multiple stages of an extended attack kill chain. This dangerous nation state attack broke into solar wind systems and injected malware directly into their software supply chain, which affected thousands of customers who installed trusted software updates. At each stage, we'll show real examples of attack techniques similar to those used against solar winds, and also show how Versec can stop these exploits at multiple points. This diagram summarizes what you'll see. First, we'll show how the initial infiltration exploited a vulnerable email server with a memory-based exploit and used remote code execution techniques to establish a persistent backdoor. From there, the attackers used command injections to find and extract email addresses and user information. Next, specific developers were targeted with spear phishing emails and tricked into executing malware that opened more backdoors to their development systems. From there, the attackers were able to insert and hide malicious code directly into source code, which was then compiled into software builds and properly digitally signed by the software vendor. From there, the compromised software updates were downloaded by thousands of end customers. When these compromised updates were installed, the attackers were able to send crafted HTTP requests to open memory-based web shells, establishing yet more backdoors into the infrastructure of thousands of companies. At multiple points, we will also show you how Versec can stop critical stages of this kill chain and could have prevented downstream damage. Let's see this in action. In this first step, we'll attack a vulnerable Microsoft Exchange server. Here you can see its IP address. And now you can see the attacker's console. Using Metasploit tools, we'll launch a script that exploits a vulnerability in Exchange. Here you can see the details of the Exchange server and its IP address. Let's run the exploit. You can see the command stage are in progress, and now we've received a session from which we can open a remote shell into the machine. You can see that we have system privileges, and the IP config command shows that this is the correct machine. This was just the first step of what was an extended kill chain that was propagated over months. But before we go further, let's pause and show how Versec could have nipped this attack in the bud and prevented all the downstream damage. Let's turn on Versec to protect this exchange server using our host protection capabilities. Now, let's run the same exploit and we'll show the protected and unprotected servers in top and bottom views. You can see the same details about the exchange server. Let's run the same exploit and you can see the command stager again, but this time, Versec has blocked the attack and no session was created for the attacker. Now let's go back to the Versec console to show some of our forensics. You can see an incident was created and our process monitoring capabilities detected an illegal process, ccfbi.exe. And here you can see the automatic protection action that prevented this malicious process from running. We can also see on the exchange server that the malicious process, ccfbi, was suspended, preventing the attack from running. Of course, the best protection strategy is to stop the attack as soon as possible, which is exactly what Versec did. But for the purposes of the demo, we will let the attack continue, show you more details of how it worked, and then show you how Versec can stop the attack for end customers as well, even if they have received the corrupt software update. So, let's get back to the attack. Now that we're in the Exchange server, we'll use a PowerShell to gather useful user information about end users. Here, we've found a couple of email addresses we'll use for the next phishing step. We'll send the phishing email to John Smith, posing as the other internal user, James Johnson. First, we'll look for an admin process on the Exchange server to migrate into. We'll take the Notepad process and run the PowerShell command at the same privilege level. Let's copy the process ID and migrate it into the process, which you can see was successful. Now, we're going to use another PowerShell command to create the phishing email, which will lure the user into clicking on a malicious link that will contain a browser hook script. And finally, we'll run the command and see that the email has been sent successfully. Now let's look at John Smith's laptop. Here's the email, posing as a benign message from the marketing team with the malicious link. When we click on that, it takes us to a web page that contains the malicious hook. Now, let's go back to the hacker's server. You can see that the victim's browser is hooked onto the beef control panel. We'll use this to send the user a fake Adobe Flash update notice. When the user clicks on the link, it will install the malware. 
And now you can see we have a successful reverse shell into the victim's machine and now essentially own his system. Now let's move on to show how this attack was weaponized. Using the reverse shell we've set up, let's download the source code. You can see it here. For demo purposes, we're showing open source WebGoat code. But imagine this is your crown jewels, the critical source code for a major software company. With the next script, we're going to replace a portion of the source code called autocomplete with the fake malware we've created. This was done cleverly to hide the malware and make it look like normal code. Now that we've inserted the false code, we'll check it back into the code repository. Let's go back to John Smith's laptop. We can see that the code has been checked in and now has become part of the master branch. Here, we can verify the code has been added. And let's look at the malicious code that we've inserted into the source code library. This code will be used later to open backdoors into the systems of thousands of unwitting end customers. This is the actual code from the supernova exploit that was used as part of the SolarWinds attack. Here you can see the software build server, which will build a new software release to distribute to their customers. Here you can see, from an end user perspective, that the update is ready to download and has proper certification from the software vendor. Now for the final stage. Let's show how this attack was propagated to thousands of end customers. Our customer, Acme Corp, is running the vendor's application and has downloaded the corrupted software update. So let's update the Acme Corp app and restart the system. Now let's go back to our hacker server. Using a carefully crafted HTTP request, we have successfully opened a persistent backdoor into the end user's system and can execute any commands we want. We'll run a few commands and see that we now have complete control over the end user's machine and can continue to infiltrate this company's systems, persistent for long periods of time, gather more reconnaissance and continue to attack the kill chain. You can also see we still have persistence with the developer's machine, John Smith, and can continue to inject more malicious code. And if we back up to our first step with Metasploit, you can see that we still have ongoing access to the compromised exchange server that started the entire kill chain. Let's bring Versec back into the picture and show how it can protect the end customers. Here, Versec is turned on to monitor the customer's application that has received the corrupted update and installed a malicious software update. When the attacker tries to run remote who am I command, you can see that the access is completely blocked. Back on the Versec console, let's look at the incident. Here, you can see that we've detected the illegal command injection, the who am I command. We can also see detailed forensics on the attacker's IP, the session ID, and details on the malicious HTTP request from the remote attacker. This is where Versec offers critical protection. While conventional security tries to stop bad traffic from entering, they can only stop what they've seen before and fail to stop the SolarWinds attack. Versec instead uses a different model. Our application-aware technology maps precisely to what any application is allowed to do and instantly stops any deviations, regardless of the source, with no prior knowledge. At the end of the day, this is what's needed to provide effective defense against this type of advanced attack.